All right, welcome back. This is Physical Science 100. Right now we'll be talking about Chapter 16, which is kind of an overview of the quantum model of the atom. Um, this model incorporates what we learned in Chapter 15 about matter having properties of waves. So the electrons now are not just particles going around the nucleus, but they have properties of waves as well. So to start, we're going to look back and remember standing waves that we learned about earlier in this unit. Um, standing waves, remember, you can do with the telephone cord um, and make these shapes, okay? This is the lowest energy shape that we can do with um, the space that we have here, just going back and forth, up and down. If we put a little bit more energy into it, we can make a shape that looks like this. It's a little bit more complex, and it has a node, which represents an area of destructive interference. Put even more energy into it, and we get another shape. It's a little bit more complex, this time with two nodes. Okay? And note that it's not possible to have a standing wave in between these two. We have to have one set here and one set here um, because those are the only wavelengths that will work. There's not one in between that can fit. Okay? Um, so basically, instead of thinking about orbits like we talked about with the Bohr model, we're going to talk about electrons and orbitals, which are three-dimensional standing waves. So we take standing waves make it into a 3D pattern, and that will give us a probability cloud, we call it, of where an electron is most likely to be found. Okay? And this model explains why we have certain energy levels like in the Bohr model. Because um, he, he didn't know how to explain that. But now that we think of these orbitals as standing waves, they can only exist at certain energies. They can't exist in between. Um, so we have different types of orbitals. There are s orbitals, which are lowest in energy, um, p orbitals, d, and f, just an increasing order of energy. Okay? And the higher we go in energy, the more complex the shapes of the orbitals get, just like we did here with the standing waves. Um, for example, s waves are generally spherical, and p waves kind of look like dumbbells. And I'll come back and touch on that in a moment. But let's talk about how these orbitals are organized within an atom. Okay? We organize them into something called shells. A shell is just a group of orbitals that have the same amount of energy, relatively. So, looking here, this is what we call an energy diagram or an energy well. And we're going to kind of organize where we put, which orbitals we put electrons into. Yeah. Okay? Um, the first shell has only one orbital in it, and it's the 1s orbital. 1 for the first shell, s, because it's an s orbital. And we represent it with this horizontal line. That corresponds to the 1s here, so it's just a spherical shape with the nucleus at the center. And so that spherical shape, the electron, is most likely going to be found somewhere within that sphere. It's a three-dimensional probability cloud. Okay? We go up to the second shell, and in the second shell, we have two, uh, two s orbital and two p orbitals, okay? S orbitals always come in groups of one, so that's why we have one in each right here. And even in the three s, we have one. P orbitals come in sets of three, so we're just going to put three p orbitals right there, okay? And the, three, the shape of all the, three, of all the p orbitals is the same. It looks kind of like a dumbbell. And so right there at the middle, that's going to be a node, like we have here in standing waves. Okay? Um, and the nucleus is going to be found right there at the node. And these orbitals, we have three of them, and they're all kind of overlapping each other, but there's going to be one that's oriented up and down, another that's going to be left and right, and so you can picture those two on top of each other, and a third one that would be kind of coming in and out of the board, okay? So we have these three 2p orbitals, which are all at right angles to each other, okay? And they're all overlapping the 1s and the 2s orbitals as well, okay? The 2s orbital here, we can see it's still spherical, and that's the one right here. Um, but this, it's still spherical, but it's a little bit more complex shape. Just like when we go up in energy, we get a more complex shape. And so, the 2s orbital has a little sphere inside, and then there's another spherical layer on top of that with a no 
node in between. This is just a cross section. So remember it's being spherical. Then we go up to the 3s orbital, right? Another, the third, ener third energy shell. Um, so we have more energy, and so it's a more complex shape. So we kind of have, you know, the central one, and then two outer layers um, with the nodes in between. Remember, that's just a cross section. So we can only fit two electrons within each orbital. Okay, and I'll show you how we fill those in. Uh, electrons always like to exist at the lowest energy state possible, and so we're going to start at the very bottom here, filling up electrons. And before we start, we have to understand another property of electrons, which is called spin. You don't need to know a lot about it, but there's an upspin and a downspin. And you can't put two electrons that have the same spin within an orbital, so we're going to use arrows to represent these electrons, so that will represent the upspin, and we have one right here with the downspin. Okay, And so then, we have this filled up, and then electrons want to fill in the lowest available, or the lowest energy available orbital, and so we'll go up here to the 2s. We can fit two electrons there. Now this next part is a little bit tricky. Um, this is part of the exclusion principle. Um, electrons are like people, in that they, they like their space. Okay, so if we think about this as a couch that has, you know, three cushions, we're not going to have people that like sit close to each other, but it's more comfortable if we spread out at first, right? So we're going to go across putting one electron in each orbital, because um, it's more ener com com it's more energetically comfortable for the electrons, we'll say, just as people sitting on a couch, okay? And then, um, once we have all of those filled up, then the other electrons can come in and fill in the open spots in that orbital, okay? And it's like, you know, if we have people sitting on a couch, it's like a guy and a girl like to sit next to each other. It's more comfortable, right? So um, they just fill across like that. And so then we can continue that pattern as we go up and start filling in like this, okay? Same all the way across. In the third shell, we add D orbitals, okay? And there are five of those that come in sets of five, remember? And so this is basically an overview of how electrons work in the quantum model, um, remembering that they have properties of both particles and waves.